So in our previous video, we were reintroduced to the definition of what the limit of a function from the real numbers to the real numbers means. And that definition of a limit uses this epsilon and delta formalism. Epsilon tells me how close you would like me to get to the value of the limit, L, on the y-axis. And then delta says how close do I have to get to x0 on the x-axis in order that all of the x values that are delta close to x0 will have f of x values, y values, that are epsilon close to L. In this video, we'll use that definition of limit of a function to give us sort of a one-stop definition using epsilons and deltas for whether a function is continuous at a point x0. So remember from our calculus class, the idea of what it meant for a function to be continuous at x0 is that the limit of my function as we approach x0 and the value of my function at x0 tell the same story that the value of the function and the value of its limit agree with one another. So now that we have a, an analysis level under, of understanding of what the limit of a function ought to be, we can use that definition to come up with an analysis formulation of what it means for a function to be continuous at x0. And that formulation is that however close you would like for me to get to f of x0, so the role of the limit value here, L, is going to be played by f of x0 in our definition of continuity. So now, the way it sounds is, however close you would like me to get to the y value associated with the x value that we're testing here, however close you want me to get to f of x0, I can get that close on the y-axis to f of x0 just by getting close enough, delta close, to x0 on the x-axis. And so all we'll do is just transport this limit definition into a definition of continuity f is continuous at x0, a point of its domain x0, if for all epsilon greater than 0, we can find a delta greater than 0, such that all of the x values that are delta close to x will have y values that are epsilon close to f of x0. All we did is just replace l by f of x0, and we get a definition of what it means for a function to be continuous at x0, using epsilons and deltas. So again, don't forget that when we're not getting our hands dirty with epsilons and deltas, this really is just the saying that the limit of the function is equal to the value of the function. Um, but then this just expands out on that definition of what does limit of a function actually mean. Then again, most functions that we're interested in are not just continuous at a single point, and it's kind of rare that we care about the continuity of a function at a single one of the points of its domain. So very often we also like to have a definition that lets us speak about continuity at a bunch of points at the same time. And for that, we have a definition of what it means for a function to be continuous on a set. And if we don't specify what set we're talking about, very often this set is taken to mean the entire domain of the function. But we can be specific too and say that a function is continuous on a set E if for all points of E, f is continuous at that point. So being continuous on a set just means being continuous at every point in that set. So it's nothing magical, nothing fancy. Uh, it's just to say that we'll take continuity at a bunch of different points and then sort of take that as a collective and say continuous on the entire set. And so if you wanted to spell that out with epsilons and deltas, it might look like uh, f is continuous on the set E. If for all points of E, and for all epsilon, we can find a delta such that all of the x's that are delta close to my x0 are, uh, have y values that are epsilon close to f of x0. And I want to close this video with an observation that's going to be important a few videos from now. When we show that a function is continuous on a set, we're showing that it's continuous at every different point of that set. And in this definition that's written down here, notice that we're choosing the point first. We're saying, all right, give me a point, x0. I'm going to show that f is continuous at that point, x0. And so it's only after we pick a point that the universe chooses an epsilon for us, and then we produce a delta such that all of the x's that are delta close to x0 have f of x's that are epsilon close to f of x0. And so that point, x0, gets chosen first in this process, which means if I'm writing a proof for some other type of argument, that everything which gets selected afterwards that we have the ability to select can actually reference the value of x0 in its definition. In particular, if the x0 is getting picked first before the value of delta, that means that the value of delta that we get in this definition can, and very often does, depend upon x0. Different points in our domain can potentially have different relationships between the epsilons and the deltas. 
For example, if I just try to slide the x0 value in this graph over a little bit, you'll notice how over in this part of the graph, it looks like the, the purple strip, the, the radius epsilon, is about equivalently tall as the green strip is wide. Right? So my epsilon and my delta look like they're kind of comparable to one another. Maybe epsilon equals delta or something like that over here. But the further that I go out to this side of the graph, notice that my deltas are getting a little bit narrower as I go out in this direction. Um, or if I go over toward the x-axis some more, now it's kind of running off the top of the screen. But so the point is, we can have different relationships between epsilon and delta at different points on a graph, even if that graph is continuous on an entire set. Sometimes that's okay. Sometimes that's not going to be what we want. And so in a few videos from now, we're going to talk about the difference between continuous functions on a set and uniformly continuous functions on a set. The latter are going to be those for which the relationship between epsilon and delta is not mediated by the point x0. In other words, the same delta is going to work everywhere on the set, regardless of what x0 we choose, for a uniformly continuous function. If you give me an epsilon, I can give you a delta without even having to know what x0 was. Whereas many continuous functions don't have that property. For many continuous functions, they're continuous on the set, but we have to have a dependence. We have to know what x0 is in order to pick a delta that works for the epsilon that you give me. And so there will be that difference. In a few videos from now, that difference is going to be salient. Um, but for right now, I just wanted to point that out because this is, the, this is the more permissive type of continuity, where we first know the point that we're thinking of, and then we can potentially use the value of that point as part of the information that we use to determine the delta that fits for the epsilon that we need.